So in this video, I actually want to set up um, shared nothing live migration. So I have two Hyper-V boxes, they're not clustered, that would be something shared. And I've got a number of networks. So I'm actually going to restrict the live migration to a specific network. So I've actually got a live migration NIC. So in the properties of this, if I also want storage migration to occur, I need to leave client for Microsoft networks and file and printer sharing because we're actually using some sort of the KIFS capability to move the storage over during the shared nothing like migration. And I've just got a uh, basically non-routed IP address that's on a private network between these boxes. But it doesn't need to be, it's just I want to dedicate a particular network to live migration traffic. Uh, both boxes are basically running the same CPU. Um, they're, they're using direct storage. And I've got the same virtual switch is defined. Because again, if I, I want it to be able to move over with no interruption, when I look at the virtual switches, I've got this external switch. And on my other Hyper-V server, I have the same external switch defined. So the first thing we need to do is really configure live migration on each box. So to do that, I go into my Hyper-V settings and I have my live migration. Now I've got it disabled, so I'm gonna enable live migration. Now the simplest thing I could do at this point is to do really, really nothing else. I could use CRED SSP and say use any available network. But CRED SSP requires me to initiate live migration from one of the Hyper-V boxes. I couldn't do it remotely because it doesn't allow my credentials to be delegated. So if I was, for example, to try and kick off the live migration from my desktop, the server I connect to that I wanna perform the live migration from would not be allowed to pass my credentials onto the target Hyper-V server to complete the process. So I wanna use Kerberos. Now, if I want to use Kerberos, I have to actually configure delegation. So I actually get jump over to my domain controller very quickly. I go to my computers and I've got my two Hyper-V boxes. So I'm gonna to go to delegation. I'm gonna say trust this computer for delegation to specific services on specific servers only. I have to set it to use Kerberos only, and I'm gonna add it to a particular server. So I'm adding it to Sabdal Hyper-V02. And I'm actually gonna enable KIFS for the actual storage. And most importantly, the Microsoft Virtual System Migration Service. So I want the gear so I can do storage migrations. So I'm enable both of those. So and that's all I need. Now if I was using SMB as the storage for the virtual machine, I would also want to set delegation for GIFs to the file server. So I've configured that on this box. Now I'm going to configure it on the other box, going the other way. And again, migration service. So got both of those configured. So now I can jump back and I can say, I want to use Kerberos. I can specify how many simultaneous live migrations I want. I'm going to limit it to two. And I only want to use specific IP addresses. So I actually want to use that 10.1.2 network and I can validate that so if I do my IP config for my live migration I have 10.1.2 something mask if I want to try and ping the other server and I've enabled the IP uh, ICMPv4 echo request so I can ping uh, I make sure I have connectivity between them another important thing to always make sure works is name resolution can I actually resolve the target servers? So yes, I, I can resolve, resolve that, sorry. And for that ICMP, this is just this file and print sharing echo request. 
says type migration setup on this box. Now I need to set it up for the target server. So I'm just going to select the target server, Hyper-V settings again, same settings, add that same network. And now both of these boxes are actually configured for live migration. At this point, I'm actually going to create a connection to a virtual machine that I'm actually going to migrate. So this is a, an XP virtual machine, so it's not requiring anything um, flash or latest. In, I can do this with anything. What's running inside the VM actually doesn't matter. So this virtual machine, very loud, um, but this VM is running on Hyper-V01. I can see I have a couple of hard drives connected to the external network switch. Like I said, processor, but it's using local storage. What I'm now going to do is migrate it. So I can right click and I'm going to say I want to move it. I want to move the entire virtual machine, not just the storage. I want to move it to Hyper-V02. I want to move the virtual machine's data to a single location because I'm not using shared storage, so I need to move it. Where does it want to move it to? This is on the target. So in here, I could select this folder. Actually what I want to do is, just for completeness sake, which is very quickly, Create a new folder. There we go. That's my target. It's very small, it's only four gigabytes. Next, it's confirming what it's going to do. Finish. So I can see here on my live migration network, suddenly doing a load of activity, 224 megabits. So what it's actually now doing is it's doing that copy. So it's copying over the storage of that live migration network. If I look at my target, it is now actually create the folders and it's populating and copying that storage over. But the important thing is this VM is still working. I'm still connected. My remote session has not gone anywhere. I can go and start doing advanced tasks like Minesweeper. Oh, and I'm bad. But it, it's just running. Program is still running just fine. Still connected, nothing's happening right now. So let's go back and see where I actually am in terms of the migration process. So the storage is copied. 
there's not really any more activity anymore is cleaning up a few items actually from that migration so copying again some differences as it's performing the migration memory data etc so it's completing over that migration process still actually quite a lot of data going over and right now it's still running on that initial box but I can see it's actually doing that move it's at 61 percent so it's still going across but I'm still using this virtual machine I'm not disconnected carrying on being very bad at Minesweeper and that's the key thing during this migration so it's moving the storage there's nothing shared here it's moving the storage then it's going to move the memory so when it moves the storage initially it does a complete copy things change while it's doing that copy so then it goes and does a mirroring of future writes copies over a delta then it's going to copy all the memory over so again all the time I have access to this virtual machine go back again see where we are okay so all the network activity is basically stopped at this point um, the prompt has gone away and the VMs vanished and it's actually now running on the other box it's been running for 40 seconds and I'm still here I'm still connected I lost nothing Think it disconnected no apps no pause it copied the storage it copied the memory it copied the device state I think it disconnected from a TCP TCP IP perspective that migration is complete. If I now look, I can see I have that virtual machine just sitting on the other box. So that was it. That was setting up shared nothing live migration in a few minutes and actually doing a live migration of an XP virtual machine from direct attached storage to direct attached storage with nothing but a network connection between the boxes. And I mean, it literally is that easy. And if you think this was between two standalone boxes, this could have been between a standalone and a cluster, between two completely separate clusters, complete mobility um, in your environment. If I sort of really want to push the envelope, what I can actually do now is on my main machine, I'm actually going to fire up Hyper-V Manager. So this is now running on my Windows 8 machine. I'm actually going to connect to my Hyper-V boxes. So I can see those same two Hyper-V servers. Because what I didn't test before was the delegation. I actually initiated that move from one of the boxes. So now what I want to do is effectively move it back. So actually, one thing I didn't really pay close attention to is what storage I actually had that on originally. I think it was the G drive. Oh yeah, there it is. And it's basically empty now because it moved it away. So I want to move it back to that folder on the original machine. So this time I'm using my local Hyper-V instance. So it's got my translucent window this is actually running on my Windows 8 box, so I'm remotely connected. So I'm going to now select it on Hyper-V02, and I'm going to say, hey, I want to move it. I want to move the virtual machine. I want to move it back to my original Hyper-V box. Move it to a single location again. I'm going to browse. So again, this is remotely accessing the storage. So it was that G drive, virtuals. XP, select it, and now it's performing that migration. So I'm initiating that remotely. So now if I actually jump back to the Hyper-V server itself, I can see it started the migration, so 14%. If I look at the task manager, you can see the receive this time because it's receiving all the information from the other Hyper-V box. It's again, and it's on the live migration network. So both the storage and the memory copy over the live migration network. So that's gonna carry on. And again, I'm still connected, nothing's happened. I'm still terrible at Minesweeper.
Uh, I'm really not gonna sit here. And, oh, wrong one. Oops. Um, and it's still running. No loss of connectivity while it's now my grant. And remember, I initiate that connection remotely this time. If I'd have selected cred SSP, that would not have been possible. That is only available because I selected the user Kerberos and I set up that delegation in Active Directory. So that's really the key point. Solitaire, whatever. It's running. I flip back to my live Hyper-V. I can see it's still performing the move. Again, this is still my remote one. I look at it, I'm at 58%. So it's performing that complete live migration. And now I can actually initiate that remotely thanks to that Kerberos. If I go back and actually start digging around, so it's still, it's a little lull. Now it says it's finished. So if I jump back to my local Hyper-V manager, the VM is gone. I go back and look, and there it is. It's been running for 13 seconds, and I'm still connected. I lost nothing, there was no pause, no interruption. Live migration initiated from one of the Hyper-V boxes, initiated remotely from my local Hyper-V console. So complete flexibility, and again, back on direct attached storage. Easy. I hope that was useful. I uh, appreciate your time. Thank you.